Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. Of course, I sit with my best friend Tony. What's up, buddy? What's going on, brother? Nothing. Chilling like a villain. Uh, we're uh, fighting this winter here in the Mid Atlantic, but uh, but you know the rest of the country's got it worse, so I can't feel you know too bad about it. Well, by Friday it'll be spring again. No, I can't believe it's gonna be like seventy degrees after eight inches of snow. But uh, but hey, I want to talk about a couple things. Um, first and foremost, uh, April thirteenth, we have uh, our show, our annual show. It's become an annual show now, which is so crazy. But uh, we have Presley Poe and friends. Um, this year we've teamed up with our uh, our dear friends at Babelis and we have so many uh unbelievable artists coming in um we have uh uh los cuts it he's opening the show and then we have olivia smalley omg artistry we have jamie wiley who's doing an incredible editorial class if you're into editorial her class is going to be absolutely mm -hmm. extraordinary um we have reggie marcel we have the amazing Ira Pope Sage. Um, if you've never followed Ira, he's like on a different level when it comes to haircutting. He understands it and he teaches it like completely different than I've ever seen. Um, he's just got an unbelievable understanding of head shape and and how haircuts work with that. Um, and then uh, at the uh, then we have uh, uh, Rima. Uh, hair by Rima. Uh, Rima is absolutely one of the best curly hair artists I've ever seen. And then, of course, we have our headliner, Miss Presley Poe. Um, and that's all happening on April 13th. Go to PresleyPoeAndFriends.com if you guys want more information on that. Man, that's going to be packed. Dude, it's going to be a packed, packed day, man. So April 13th is going to be awesome. April 14th, all of our artists are doing classes. So um, you definitely want to sign up for those classes, too, uh, to 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 clear clear out any confusion. Um, it's an a la carte weekend. So uh, every everything that you do during the weekend is a la carte, which just means you pay for everything separately. So um, you come to the show Saturday night. That's a separate thing. And then on Sunday, all the classes are separate. But pick and choose what you want. That's it, man. Pick and choose what you want. And um, with the artists that we have in, uh, I like to think of it as like you're getting your PhD in hairdressing, right? You're, you're past your masters. You're getting your PhD in hairdressing, and and you know any anywhere that you feel that you're lacking in the industry, um, I like to think that we we're kind of filling those um those those holes. We'll call them. So we're and to me, the some of the best parts, especially a Saturday night, is the networking. The you know like a lot of times when you go to these shows the artists they'll disappear backstage and you'll never see them again, but this show when this when we're done on the stage we're all hanging out on the floor and yeah. we're all you know tipping cocktails and and slapping fives and really getting to to know each other and we have the is the VIP experience or we have the VIP experience so um again it's it's a la carte um we have the VIP experience so uh, an hour before the show if you want to hang out with the artists and ask them questions or anything we're having round tables with each one of the artists so you'll get um you'll get a few minutes with each one of the artists and those are limited too so you, you know there's only like maybe eight to ten of you guys at a table with each artist so uh you really be able to, to have a nice conversation yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, it's, it's the time to pick their brain. Um, Even after even after the show, when we do the networking thing. It's still a little chaotic. People want pictures and all that kind of stuff. And, and the artists are being pulled. But um, but that VIP thing was designed for those that really want to, uh, you know, break bread and to, uh, you know, chat, chat with the artist and, and pick their brains. You yeah. know, last year, Sam. Uh, Presley and Rebecca Taylor did it. And, you know, um, the people that did the VIP experience just thought that it was just, it just totally different. You know, it's just, you, you, you got their attention for, for a few minutes and, and that was, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I think there's a little champagne and little, little snackadoos and little snackadoos, get your snackadoos in, but yeah, it's a, it's a great experience. So today I kind of, I, uh, we're bringing on, um, an artist that, uh, that actually is friends with Presley. Um, we're bringing on an artist that, uh, that, uh, uh, 
she's she's kind of, at the beginning of each year we kind of want to open your mind up to different things and and today i hope that my mind is opened up to a couple of things um she is a grounding artist but well, we'll get into that but um but uh she uh we're gonna talk a little bit about about what i call the woo woo but she's gonna assure me that that it's deeper than the woo woo and she's gonna um change my, my <laughs> she's gonna about, de woo woo it she's gonna de woo 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 that's too many woo woos. Yeah, you know. So, uh, so anyway, uh, let's get in, Miss Miss Brooke Kenya, man. Welcome to your day off. Hi, it is such an honor and a pleasure to be here. Excuse me, with you today. Um, yes, I'm very excited about de woo wooing the woo woo. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. Um, because I think I think when you say woo woo, it just initially just takes people kind of like back like you know they don't want a part of it or they think right then right like, you know a, a little bit more spookier than what it is um yeah i think it kind of you know listen i have friends in the space that use that terminology and so it's no disrespect i think that it's relatable to a lot of people um but for me i like to it is a lifestyle so so i just want to be very clear in how like important my work is and to me i like to just stay out of that terminology if that makes sense <laughs> no 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 that I, I i listen there's no i think that 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 woo woo is used as a negative term more than it's used as a positive term right mm -hmm. so yeah maybe it's like yeah. a fringe in a bank you know, you know so people yeah people like you know, exactly, oh, exactly. Bang, <laughs> <laughs> yes and i think that it can be really fun and there are a lot of very valuable people in my space that use that terminology i just personally choose to you know i speak more in spirituality or the metaphysical world or you know that's just where i live so you're a fringe, yes. <laughs> <laughs> a fringe. yeah i am a fringe <laughs> Definitely a friend. That's I'm also a lightener instead of a bleach, you know. You know, I I I vacillate between the two actually. <laughs> Sometimes I catch myself saying tweeze instead or pluck instead of tweeze, you know. Right. <laughs> well, well you know, it's like how do you say a bleach out? Uh, a lightener well, out doesn't work or or an all over uh, lightener. And then it just becomes wordy, you know? Yeah. People get confused. It's a thing. <laughs> yeah, it's all crazy. Actually, I want to do a poll now, like a, a fringe or bang. So, yeah. Uh, re reach out to us on the on the IGs. Is it fringe or is it bang for you? And then, uh, yeah. So what is it? What is how do you say it? <laughs> well, I know if you're British, you definitely say fringe. And I know well, that's a whole nother story for another thing. <laughs> The crazy it's the difference between scissors and shears here okay okay here listen i'm gonna upset the entire room hairdresser or hairstylist okay thank you yeah beauty operator oh beauty operator oh that's terrible taking it old school <laughs> well then you have beautician then you're like oh man i've been called beautician in a long time but i was definitely called beautician a few times in my career and i'm like i don't even and know what like what so what is that <laughs> it only reminds me of like beauty school dropout right like yes so you're a beautician your beauty school dropout. yep yep <laughs> that's so wild so uh, so brooke how did you uh how'd you get into this space and then you know uh uh and then how did you kind of like you have to live in the space before you're owning that space, exactly. right? Yeah, yeah. And, and then teach yeah. that space, I guess is where I'm going. It is a journey, that is for sure. Um, I love this little saying that I have, the universe drives the bus. And I just try not to take too many detours. <laughs> if yeah. I get off the bus and take the wrong detour, I mean, I'll always end up where I'm meant to be, but it can be a little more difficult than if I would have just trusted my intuition. So um, I think that's just kind of, encapsulates my journey but um personally i have been in the industry for 24 years as a stylist i have worked for several major manufacturers aquage atori hanzo um kms california i've worked with nicarojo and goldwell um and in that journey what i really loved about the industry was i always knew i wanted to be an educator i loved teaching sharing being of service to others helping improve their life behind the chair and um, I've been honored to be in some really cool spaces with some really amazing stylists um, throughout my journey. But what I also realized along that journey is that there's a lot of people in those classes who want to know really literally anything besides what you're doing hair wise. <laughs> and so um, 
my education slowly turned into more of a coaching space before I even really realized it. Um, along that journey, I had a lot of things go on in my personal life, which led into my relationship with my spirituality and really coming to this place of truly um, deeply loving myself and knowing that I could only be met as honestly if I've, as I've met myself and that I wanted to be able to be internally that empowering person that everybody saw outwardly. So it was a really, I'm getting goosebumps, sorry. <laughs> it was a very personal journey to get um, to where I am today. But what, <clears throat> what I've learned as I went through, I stepped out from behind the chair a little bit and went into sales. And that's when I worked for Hans. I was an educator and a sales rep for them, one of their first female educators. And um, that was a really interesting time because I got to meet so many people and hear so many different perspectives on life and you know, um, again, I went back to this place where in my classes, people would ask more about what the business of being a stylist was or the, how you handled it or, you know, rather than the actual technique all the time. So um, as COVID came, um, I switched gears. I went into um, distribution. I opened a territory here in Missouri and Kansas um, with Beautycraft, and it was very successful. But I realized I was missing something and my husband came to me one day and goes, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> and what I realized is that um, I was no longer just being of service to people. I was doing things that other people wanted me to do to make them and their people happy. <laughs> and so I ended up resigning from that position, which was a huge step for me. And again, dove deeper into my spirituality, why I did what I did, what made me authentically me, what made me happy, what fulfilled me, what made me shine. And I went through a mastermind last year with its Jody Brown. And that's when it really smacked me upside the head that I was truly meant to be sharing my light. And it was no longer being an educator was a stepping stone to the coaching. So it was all kind of just getting me on this path to be able to have the connections that I have now so that I could help stylists know how to get grounded behind the chair so they can protect themselves and really cultivate their dream career because you can do all the work in the world, but if it feels like chaos in your head, you're not going to be happy and really making sure and knowing that you can step into your power and truly have the career that you dream of and not just feel like you have to live in this space that everybody thinks you need to live in to be successful. Right. Um, because everybody's idea of success is very different. So I embrace that in my coaching. I really want to know what drives people individually and not just what they think they should say or feel or do. So well, I mean, it's it's kind of, of you know, the, the roundabout. Of age has a lot to do with that right i mean like like i i the stuff that i cared about at 20 i certainly don't care about now or not that i don't right. care about it but but just like i have a deeper connection with what i care about i guess now and 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 how we do impact i mean as you get older you know there, there there's there's the dreaded word of legacy that that comes up but but but, <laughs> but it's empowering as well now you mentioned about like you were truly happy and and i'm not challenging you on it but but how do you know that you're like you're like truly happy. Like, have you got to a space where that's it? Or this is, or this is part of the mantra to where you're like, to be truly happy, this is what I need to do. Well, it's certainly something that I struggle with internally, like, like, oh, yeah, right. I'm happy when I'm doing this or, or when this happens. But then I know that a couple of days later, like, you know, the that switch can be shut off again. Yeah, well, I think that as creatives, first of all, that's evol ever evolving. Um, I do try to make sure that when I speak to myself, as well as people that I coach, that there is always a evolution in anything in life. So you can hit goal and then make new goal and then make new goal. You know, especially when you're dealing with creative people, there's no like, this is perfect happiness, you know? Um, life happens and shit hits the fan sometimes <laughs> and you have to, um, really it's more about mindset and perspective and being able to place yourself outside of that storm to be able to balance yourself into a place of 
happiness and understanding the silver lining. And um, that's where my energy work comes in because it's allowing yourself to get grounded and live in the present moment instead of in a place of fear and worry and limiting beliefs and what's next. And oh my gosh, this is happening to me and life is so hard because it is, but you can't live there. If that makes sense. Total. Total. Uh, one of the mantras that I totally stole from Elizabeth Fay was, um, <laughs> love her, love her. Right. But yeah. it's, I think it's her and somebody else said it too, but it's like, what if it was easy? Yeah. What if it was easy, you know, and, and what that does is it kind of gives and it's moment to moment. Let me assure you, mm -hmm. but it gives me permission, at least for that moment to, yeah. to go, well, what if it was easy? What if, what if, what if everything that's, that's being hard is, is all my doing? Well, and, and really, <clears throat> sorry, again, that gives me goosebumps because that's really what it's about. I think a lot of this is programming and what we're taught to be afraid of and what we're taught to fear and limiting beliefs of what we're actually capable of. And that's why be this space, I feel like, has become so important, it's not only within the world, but within our industry, because there's all this these rules that we put on ourselves and how we need to act and behave that um, to really just take that down to something simple, like what you just said, what if it was easy? Or um, I had spoke with Shelby Betancourt and she was like, what's the worst that could happen? You know, am I there? No. So I'm good. Right. It's a mindset shift where you have to be able to go, you know, everything happens for a reason in eat and that doesn't mean everything's going to be really happy and rainbows all the time, but how do we get ourselves out of that place of misery? Yeah. Right. It's funny. Cause, um, at 20, I wouldn't have been open to any of this, mm -mm, <laughs> uh, versus now. Uh, but, um, every morning when my kids used to, and, and it's funny because they, they, so when they, they would go off to school and I'm like, Remember, you're blessed and highly favored, right? Yeah. Blessed and highly favored. And mm -hmm. and over the years, they started taking that on, right? I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm blessed and highly favored. So when they did hit walls or they did hit struggles, they would say, you know what? This is temporary because I'm blessed and highly favored. They were able to get through anything and and still be positive and, 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 and strong and it's, and it's, you know, a lot of it's word, words of affirmation, but Absolutely. Uh, they, the words reverberate forever, right? So when you talk to yourself, you know what I mean? Talk, talk to yourself in that way. I'm, yes. I'm, you know what I mean? Because you're going to go through storms, but it doesn't mean you're going to stay in that storm, right? Absolutely. And, and, and so that's what it, when, as we're talking, this is what's making me think of, of all that. Yeah. And I, I think that that's like really important what you brought up. Words are important. Everything is energy. So words are energy. How we speak to ourselves is so important. And that is another reason why I really focus on this because self-care is not just about, um, you know, making sure that we look nice or we have the things that we like, but it's about really making sure that we are mentally being kind to ourselves to bring ourselves to a space of inner peace and the beautiful thing is, is that our generation is leading the younger generations, like you just said, into being in that more enlightened space from a younger age. And I think that there is a lot more of this conversation happening because we're breaking some of the generational curses that were put upon us so that we're not passing them down to our children and so on and so forth. And so there's a lot of different ways to talk about what I, what I believe in and my spirituality, but at the end of the day, some of these same, uh, things that we're sharing, we're on the same wavelength. It's all just in the verbiage, right. But we're kind of all in that, like feeling of you take care of yourself, you speak kind to yourself, you know, that puts you in a better headspace. When you're in a better headspace, you create more positivity around you. You know, I, it, my challenge with that, not with that, not with your statement, but the challenge that I have with that is that sometimes it'll be two days where I've been like just dogging myself internally. Yeah. You know, and then and able to catch yourself and go like, oh my gosh, what are you doing, homie? You know, 
Well, and I, and that's human nature, right? So the, at the point I, I coach people at that is like, be kind to yourself because at least you recognized it at two days, right? That's, I mean, I might be being generous there. (laughs) (laughs) It's not that I don't ever get into those places, but it's the fact that now I've built a skill set where when I recognize it, I can pull myself out of it. And that is how I coach people. But some of those things, that's where the Reiki comes in is that, we need to move that stuff energy out of your body that you don't understand. Explain Reiki. Reiki is a energetic practice. And I'm so glad that you asked me about this because I love explaining Reiki, but it is comprised of two Japanese words, Rei and Ki. And Rei is spiritual, um, spiritual wisdom and Ki is the life force energy. So I always say in layman's terms, um, if you were like a mom or a dad going to soothe your child or an animal or whatever, you're using your own energy to help soothe them. When you've become attuned to Reiki, which I'll also explain, you're able to tap into the life force energy of uh, universal consciousness to help utilize that energy in the healing process. So. Reiki is comprised of three different steps of attunements. In level one, you become attuned to heal yourself. So what you're able to do is tap into that life force energy to do various energetic healing practices to yourself. And they're typically comprised of certain hand positions on the body, as well as being able to tap into that life force energy. Reiki level two is where you're able to learn symbols. You can put Reiki into literally anything, um, inanimate objects, animals, people. Um, And that is going to allow you to be able to do that as well as um, heal others. Reiki level three, which is also called master Reiki, and that's what I am, I'm a master Reiki practitioner, is where you have been attuned to all three levels of Reiki, and you can also then share that attunement with other people that are interested in becoming Reiki practitioners. So all that to say, essentially what Reiki is, is a healing modality that uses energy to, it uses the life force energy to remove stuck and stagnant energy from the body. Stuck and stagnant energy can cause all kinds of issues, mental health, physical uh, manifestations. Um, There are even hospitals out there now that are utilizing Reiki practitioners with modern medicine because they're understanding the importance of energetics within the body. So it really is a healing practice. Um, I have been a Reiki practitioner, I think for about six years now. Um, And it has been a huge uh, transformative thing for me in my own healing and um, and how I can help heal others. Crazy. I thank you for explaining because like, Mm -hmm. like you see like, you know, you know, deep tissue massage, a Reiki. I'm like, I never knew what a Reiki was. I'm like, I have no idea what that is. So yeah, get a deep well, tissue. Well, well, yeah. you said that uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, thanks for explaining it. And all it did to me was open up more questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm know? here for it. Let's do it. No. <laughs> Let's do it. Like, uh, it, and uh, sorry if if it's naivety, but it's naivety. I mean, like, how do you know that like you've reached some kind of like life force? Like, how do you know you're there aside from watching like Star Wars and stuff? Like, how do you know <laughs> that like you're into like this life force and and what to do with it once you've kind of oh, you can't kind of achieved things. it? I'm getting there. I'm not a master yet. <laughs> so for me, I mean, everybody's journey is different. First of all, I'm just going to sure. say that. And the way that Reiki is practiced, it varies from person to person. I personally am an intuitive. So I, um, I would say I probably channel my guide. So I have a lot of intuition that comes to me when I am performing Reiki. Um, as far as how I got into Reiki in the first place, Um, I went through a pretty gnarly divorce in 2016, and that's when I really dove into my own personal healing, and I was led to have Reiki done, and it was so transformative for me um, that it really opened up the doors of me knowing that this was actually part of who I always was meant to be. 
Um, I was always different. I was always kind of weird. I was always a little bit of an outcast. And to me, that's indicative of people that have these sorts of qualities or drawn to these modalities. Um, so I, the woman that performed my Reiki, I asked her about it. Hey, tell me more about Reiki. And that's where I learned about becoming attuned. There are all kinds of energetic workers out there. There are some that choose to use Reiki and some that choose to not. You still have access to the ability to move energy if you are a true healer. It's just to me, Reiki really resonated because I'm not just using my own energy. I'm able to tap into a lineage because really that's what it is. There was a man named Yushi that created it in Japan and it's been passed down from generation to generation to generation. So all of those people in essence, their, their wisdom and their journey and um, is all accessible to me when I'm helping others. So that was just very powerful to me. I can't really explain outside of that. I think just when you intuitively know that that's something that just sits well with your soul um, is how you move through it. And because I saw how transformative it was to me. Does that mean everybody that gets Reiki is going to be a Reiki practitioner? Absolutely not. But what Reiki allowed me to do was heal things that I didn't understand. And I didn't have to explain them. And I didn't have to um, have this like full on, you know, therapy session, even though I think therapy is important as well, um, to be able to move past things that were causing me to do behaviors that were unhealthy that I didn't understand why. So, um, meaning it, your own behaviors. Yeah, absolutely. So how you handle situations, ways that you get into fight or flight, how you react. Um, I used to have, be a lot more quick to anger and I just wanted to be able to be in a place where I did not feel like I was in fight or flight. <laughs> you know, and Reiki was very transformative for me in that way. And then it also then relayed into how I dealt with my clients behind the chair and how I was able to not feel burnt out and exhausted and tired every day because I understood how to balance my body. Um, so my first thing to be is if you're skeptical, skeptical, but interested in Reiki is get Reiki see if it resonates with you. I have done many Reiki sessions on people who have never had it before. And they've come out of that going, Oh my God, I had no idea. And now, now I believe, I you like, know, you can I, feel it. I, 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 I kind of want to do it. And this is a shout out to Vanessa Rose. Um, she's our, she's our, she's a Reiki practitioner who's local to us. And she's yeah. all, um, she's also an old dear friend. Um, so shout out to her because uh, I think I'm gonna have to like schedule a sesh with her because um, I I'm love this in. for you. I, Yay! Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I'm interested. Listen, I'm, I'm, I, I kid about, and we're gonna use the word, but don't cringe. But you know, I kid about the woo woo. But the truth yeah. is, I'm super interested in it. You know. Yeah. Um, but it just, I've got to like, you know, like, like how can like something when you're not touching me, like I get like a massage and like, we've all left that massage kind of like, oh, this is amazing. You know, um, mm -hmm. but you know, I, it, it's hard for me to comprehend how not touching me. That sounds really weird, but, but how not touching me. <laughs> I get what you're saying though. <laughs> uh, it can be so like life changing in, in, in that, um, you know, uh, I, anyways, I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of where, where, where I am with that. If I can say this, um, so when you are in a space where you're spiritually balanced and you know how to connect with the universe, um, you do have a version of yourself that is called your higher self. Okay. Everybody has a higher self. Um, and when you, so I do hands-on if it's comfortable, some people aren't comfortable with that. I always ask. Um, I also do distance Reiki, but uh, essentially what happens in that situation is you can give me permission to give you distance Reiki or your higher self can. Mm -hmm. And because of my training and my experience, I am able to tap into that space. And so that would be the easiest way I can explain why hands-on doesn't make a difference because I can move energy, um, I don't want to say with my mind, you know what I'm saying? But like, I'm just able to connect with that space where I can feel your energetics. I've been given permission to, I don't ever do it without permission, if that makes sense. So whether it's you consciously giving me permission or your higher self is saying, yo, I need some help, you know, um, that's really can you do it how that permission? applies. 
Um, no, I would say there's probably people out there that do, but it's not healthy to, and, and as a ethically, I will not. Um, I don't know so, if it's an ethics thing or, or like the, like the person's energy has to be, um, um, welcoming to it. Yeah. So that's why, that's where I walk the line there. You, I essentially could receive permission from your higher self, but I still won't perform Reiki on someone if I haven't consciously connected with them on it, even if their higher self is saying, yo, hey, this person needs Reiki, then I'm going to take that moment to at least speak to you about it because Reiki can be very um, transformative in the moment. And if someone becomes emotional and doesn't understand what's going on, that's not necessarily what I'm here to do either. So um, I like to have at least some sort of personal connection prior to the Reiki being um, given. And now, obviously, in my home with my husband, I don't give Reiki to him often because I don't like to intertangle that part of our energy too much. But there are times where I'm like, hey, you need Reiki. So this is happening, <laughs> you know, so and I have close friends that are the same. But um, generally, I like to at least have some sort of like conscious interaction about it. And then um, if we're kind of on the same page, there are moments where I feel like that I would channel your higher self. They would be like, hey, you know, Reiki is needed here. Space, I'll hold space for that person and help them process. Um, yeah. You know, you, you brought up higher self. And um, and part of my practice since I was in my mid 30s was um, I, it's weird, I don't, I've never really thought of it as a higher self but I, I there's a perfect version of me that that I achieved to be and I check in with that person often. yeah yeah you know, how would how would that person react in the situation and that's as easy as and we talked about this a hundred times on the podcast but that's as easy as like opening the door for somebody you know Absolutely. And, if they don't, and if they don't say thank you or letting someone in in traffic and they don't say thank you what do you do with that energy you know, and, and I've learned that, you know, that's, that's not why I opened the door for the thank you, you know, yeah. the, it was just to be a better citizen of the world. But, um, but anyway, so, uh, I, again, I can kind of put it in higher self. Mm -hmm. That's what I achieved to be. Am I ever going to get there? No, but it gives me kind of like a, a baseline or, or more, a greater line, a higher line. Yeah. I think that you're on the fringe of something, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, but the the idea is that like i said earlier we talk about this in all different ways right but we're all kind of on that same like little area right where we're kind of having the same vibe here mm -hmm. i think that you can refer to that as your higher self whatever re this is really what i tell people at the end of the day the way i talk about it doesn't have to be the way you talk about it how does it resonate with you what does it feel like to you? Does it make you feel good? Does it make sense to you? Does it, does it, you know what I'm saying? Is it something you can move into that space? And when I coach people too, like all of my modalities may not resonate with everybody else. Okay. So I try to leave a lot of space for people to feel however they need to feel. And we talk through that to see what's going to work for you and your lifestyle. Um, and I think that I've really enjoyed you kind of opening up a little bit and being like, Hey, I have these kinds of thoughts because that's where it really starts. When you asked about how it started with me, that's where it starts. It starts with the curiosity. It starts with the digging deep. It starts with being able to see something bigger than yourself within yourself. Um, when you talk about this, um, possibility of you having this higher self, really the, what I call that is dropping out of your head into your heart. And, um, you know, not making everything out of this mind state of like kind of chaos decision making up here, but really dropping into your heart and your gut and making that soul based decision that is more off of your intuition. Um, that crazy screaming voice uh, that feels like fear is is your ego. That's not where you're supposed to make those reactionary decisions from. And that quiet voice that's often like, Hey, you left your keys, but you're like, I didn't leave my keys. And then you get to your car and you're like, shit, I left my keys. <laughs> um, that's your intuition. It's even as simple as that. And I think sometimes it gets brushed off like, oh, that was just my mind telling me, no, that's your intuition trying to get you to connect and understand that that quiet voice that we often tend to ignore is the one that we really should be listening to. Mm, 
Well, Lord knows that I've uh, had lots of conversations with my ego over the last few years. <laughs> As we all have. And Absolutely. so when I talk about grounding, it's being able to recognize that, pull yourself out of your head, drop into your heart and your gut and go, is this a fuck yes or a fuck no? Mm -hmm. And if we're feeling like scared or conflicted about something, how to not live inside the storm, but to step outside the storm, because life doesn't happen to you. You're meant to just move through it. So how do you find that space to do that? And when you can be able to remove stuck energy in the body, stagnant, um, unhappy experiences, things like that, that make you feel down about yourself, and you're able to move that out of the body, it becomes easier to find your balance faster. Because in reality, healing is like the layers of an onion. You're going to keep learning a lesson until you've learned the lesson all the way. And it can evolve as you're learning it. But eventually one day you're going to wake up and go, man, I haven't thought about that thing in a really long time. And that's because you let yourself process it. Mm, I love that. And that's happened many, many, many times in my mm -hmm. life. Um, yep. you, uh, I, I, when making decisions, I assume the first decision that I made is ego driven. I assume that my ego has the loudest voice. And then, yeah. and then, you know, um, I've also been a part of my, again, big practice. And I, I think Tony can attest to this, that um, I want to respond and not react, you yes. know? So sometimes, in, and sometimes that's as little as just taking a beat or it can take a week, you know, a yeah. beat or a week, you know, but, but, but it's important to respond and not to react. And um, even, even at home, like conversations with the family, it's like, let me process this because mm -hmm. you know, I know that, that, that my, my instinct to react isn't an instinct to respond. Well, and I'm really glad that you brought that up because there is a very big conversation around responding and reacting and anything. And I, I think you said it really well. Typically that re, uh, reactionary situation is your ego. It is a fear-based decision. It's not logical. Um, and, and it's your body's version of fight or flight. Um, I did a, a podcast with Andrew Carruthers and I think he's wonderful. Love he Andrew. Is. Yeah, he's amazing. I was following him as a hairdresser years ago, but, um, Same. but I'm so glad that I've gotten to connect with him in this space because the conversation was about, you know, really being able to, um, pull yourself out of that, like, uh, from the parasympathetic, to the sympathetic to the parasympathetic nervous system. And, you know, you touched on breath work when we were talking earlier, and that is another way that you can do that, you know, where you can stop yourself and go, okay, wait a minute. Um, my body's first instinct is to be in survival mode. And that's where you recognize that fear comes from. So you need to be able to step out of that survival mode space in order to really make a rounded, intuitive based, logical decision or a response to a situation. It, it's a, uh... You know, after doing breath work, I'm not going to lie. I, I have a little arrogance tied to it. And, <laughs> and now I just, when, when I see people struggling with certain things, I'm like, you should do breath work. You should breathe. You should breathe. Yeah. But I, I mean, mean, when you say it that easily though, like, Hey, have you tried breathing today? And uh, it's staggering how many people are like, what? Yeah. Well, but you, I breathe oh, all the time. But let me be, <laughs> let me be clear too. Like when I talked about breath work, I mean, I, it was a, it was a long one hour practice. Yeah. Right? Like it was like, it was hyperventilating for an hour and the magic that happens during that hour can't be explained. You know, that's the energy. It That's it. Right. Yeah. And, yep. and I remember the, the, the first time that I did it in that format and it was with a group, there was like a hundred people there when we did it. Yep. And like, I didn't, my, this is so strange to kind of talk about outside of doing it, but like my ego was so at bay that I didn't want to leave, you know, yeah. like first time in probably, you know, 40 years, like there, there was not that connection to the ego. And like, I literally sat there after everyone got up and I was like, I just, I, I know. Can I stay here? Like, yeah, <laughs> totally. I totally was that way. And like, it yeah. was, I totally know once I open my eyes, you know, all, not all, but, you know, certainly there would be a, a human experience rushing in. And for those moments, I was outside of that. Does that resonate with you? Yeah. The ego's like, Hey, I'm back. Yeah, and, you're like, oh. and you're like, yo, I liked it better when you were gone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
No, I think so. This all brings me full to full circle to like really the antithesis of healing is getting to a place where you can recognize that faster. It's not as scary and you can move out of it quicker. Mm. And so having modalities, whether it's Reiki or breath work or having someone read your cards or just having a life mindset coach, whatever can help you get to a space where you recognize that to a space where you're living in the moment, you can get balanced in your body. You recognize that so much quicker and it's not as scary, right? So the ability to access that feeling can happen anytime. Mm. You just have to do it. Mm. And what was transformative for me with Reiki is that as I use that big modality to move out things I didn't understand, I was able to come back into balance quicker. It's not that I never am out of balance. We are having a human experience, right? Life happens. Um, but the ability for me to be able to pull myself back into a space of balance is a lot easier now that I've used this practice to help myself. And the cool part about it too is Reiki is going to go wherever it needs to. So again, like I said, you don't have to fully explain the situation, but also I'm receiving Reiki while I give Reiki. So it's just a whole big like kind of loving circle that helps everybody involved. You brought up grounding as well. What do you mean by grounding? So um, are you familiar with the chakra system within the body? Tell us about it. Let's talk about it. I mean, I know all about it, but, you know, certainly there's some listeners that know nothing about it. They're like, what are you talking about, lady? Um, So basically there, there's a lot of chakras um, in our auric field or energetic field or however you want to explain it. But this, there are seven main ones that lie in the meridian of body. And those are typically what we work with in Reiki Um, and a lot of metaphysical um, healing work. So you've got your crown chakra, which is of course going to be at the crown of your head. Um, you have your uh, third eye chakra, which is going to be in between your eyebrows, and that's going to be your intuition. Sorry, your crown is your connection to the universe. You have your throat chakra, which is going to be your voice speaking your truth. You have your heart chakra, which is in the middle of your chest, and that's going to be your connection with love um, and kind of how you make decisions. You have your solar plexus, which is going to be between your heart chakra and your belly button, and that's going to be your sense of self, how you value yourself. Um, Your sacral chakra is going to be just below your belly button. And that is going to be where you hold a lot of your relationships. Um, A lot of hurt, a lot of pain live there, but also a lot of strength lives there. And then you have your sacral chakra, which is going to be at the root of your spine. Um, And that is going to be where your home base is, where you feel safe, where you feel grounded. When I say grounded, what I mean is just feeling... When you are balanced in your body and you're grounded, you're not in your head and you're not too in your feels and your gut either. You're in this space where you feel very balanced in your body. You can have clear thought. You can hear your intuition. You can make decisions with your heart and you can feel strong in yourself. So that to me is kind of the antithesis of what I teach because um, there are simple exercises that you can do. I actually just released a course called three practices to protect your energy behind the chair. And what I walk through is, um, not only like calling back your own energy, how you have your space set up, how you deal with clients, but allowing yourself to feel and, uh, create a space within your body and, um, your salon where you can have a very calm, peaceful environment and leave your work at work at the end of the day. So being grounded is simply just being able to be in a state of peace and and, um, connected to the universe is the way I like to feel, because that's when I feel the most um, in control of what I'm doing or able to follow my intuition the best. So it's it's kind of more of a mental picture of literally being anchored to the earth. Um, Some people get grounded. I've I have a ton of plants like that to me is grounding, like working with nature um, can be a grounding practice as well. Yeah. Cause I see uh, um, people talking about, you know, that, you know, take your shoes off, walk on the ground outside to ground yourself to To mother earth. Yeah. 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 And (laughs) and you see these grounding sheets uh, that uh, 
just to kind of ground your body again. Yes. And really what it's about is a lot of times when I do Reiki, I find that people either live in their lower chakras. So they're, um, and those can either be overactive or underactive. So you're way hypercritical of yourself and others, or you're way down on yourself. So we like to bring you to a space of feeling very neutral or you're way up in your upper chakras. And all you can think about is this ego mind, this like constant fear-based thinking, these limiting beliefs. And so when you can bridge the gap between those two places, that's where you're able to be in that grounded state, which is really the best place to be to make those um, decisions, to have a lifestyle where you're not feeling burnt out, overwhelmed, chaotic. Um, it is so common when I'm coaching people, I say, what do you do for self-care? And they're like, what do you mean? They literally don't have anything they do to just take care of themselves. And it's like, you cannot take care of others if you don't take care of yourself. So I start there with my coaching because being successful and making six figures doesn't matter if you're not happy or fulfilled or balanced. I have a theory about um, when we started to disconnect from the metaphysical and um, I, it, it dawned on me when we were in Zion, I think. Um, but like when we were in Zion and you look up and you see like the deepest, most beautiful sky filled with stars. And mm -hmm. I kind of, my, my theory is, is that about a hundred and 120 years ago, we started to, we started to, we, we no longer saw that, you know, because when I was sitting there in Zion, I go, wow, this is the way that, you know, hundreds of thousands of humans have seen the sky. And for the mm -hmm. last hundred years, we haven't been able to see the sky like this, right? Because of all the light pollution. Yeah. You know, and then I, I was wondering, again, my theory is, is that that was kind of like the first kick in like, like being disconnected with, with, with the universe. And, and when like the human ego says that, that um, I'm disconnected from that. I'm disconnected from the earth. I'm disconnected from the skies. I'm disconnected from the grounding. And then, you know, and then over time, just more and more of that, you know, with every generation, we get further and further away from that. But I think that there's something to that. Um, I think that, you know, both in Asian cultures, it's also interesting too, that the people that are most, and I'm going to make a, a, a brash um, um, generalization, but you know, like the people like in the, uh, in the upper Northwest and stuff that seem to be a little bit more connected um, in just different pockets around the country mm -hmm. that were connected with, with the metaphysical seem to be like they have, they have dark skies. You know what? I think it's really interesting that you say that I've been to a couple dark sky communities and it is amazing. Um, I would, I would say I have to agree with you. There has, it, since everything is energy, if there's so much going on around you that you are not able to focus on what's in front of your face, of course, you're going to be disconnected with what's going on in your body, you know? And I think that we, as a people, humans have really been programmed to think that we need to be go, 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 go all the time. And as unfortunate as COVID was, it allowed a lot of, it required a lot of us to slow down and sit within ourselves. And I do think that that was a shift that I, I'm careful how I say this, um, it was a shift that was meant to happen. You know what I'm saying? Like people had to slow down. Um, it was, it was a sad time, but it was also a very compelling time, you know? And so I think that to be able to say that you felt that in Zion is really cool because it's a very magical place. And so the other parts to that is there are, there are places within our entire planet that are considered very magical they have these large energetic vortexes and so for you to have an epiphany in a place like that is pretty it's pretty normal and it's pretty wonderful that you were open to it because not everybody that goes there is going to have that experience but it is possible because um, of the heightened energy that's there so I do think that you are on to something me personally I love to travel I can't stay in one place for very long and I love to go to places that move my soul and I literally just let that guide me mm -hmm. um, I do I'm going to Tulum in a few weeks that's a place I've nice. been several times and I think it's pretty magical as well I'm actually doing an opening circle for a retreat there for scissors makes sense but um, there's just the if you have that pull to go to those places, I say go because there's always something cool that can be learned from it for sure. For sure. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know if I disagree with you necessarily, but, but I want to kind of at least chat it out. Like, like yeah. coming out of COVID, like I understand that 
I understand that that it was a it was a reality check for a lot of people, but it also seems to be like, and I felt it myself, and you certainly see it in all my clients that there's just been so much more stress related to life since we've come out of it, and 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 it had it wasn't the big. To me, it wasn't the big shakeup about like, hey, here, here, Earth, you need this shakeup. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't the, it wasn't Noah's flood. You know that that was going to change the Earth. To me, or if it was, it wasn't because it wasn't to get more grounded. It, it, it seems like it's in chaos. Yeah, so that's why I'm careful to tread on the topic. I think that there's a lot to be said there. Honestly, my mom died of COVID. So I dealt with a lot in that situation as well. So I, I have my own feelings around many facets of it. Um, I think that the way that I choose to mourn for the people whose lives were lost, but also I've seen how it's transformed some people and the ability to be able to at least sit with themselves that were never able to do that before, but also that need to slow down the earth cleared, the skies cleared, the air cleared. Um, and people had to really kind of think about how they did things. Has it been a huge stressor on our country? Absolutely. So there are highs and lows to everything. Um, it's all in how you choose to look at it moving forward, you know, and um, I think that that's why I said I, I kind of tread lightly on the conversation. But I think for me, in the way that I believe I have to go, what can I pull from it? Because the fact of the matter is it happened and we can't go back and change it. And what did I, how was I able to grow and learn and move through it? And, and um, I think that a lot of people's true selves were revealed and a lot of people felt like they maybe got back to themselves yeah. in the midst I mean, of the chaos. Yeah. I mean, I, I certainly have seen that too. It's just like, it, it just seems like a lot coming out. It was of, a lot. There, there's a, it's a lot. It's a lot to process. It's a lot. It's a lot. to yeah. do. We, and you know, I think we do live in a different world now and maybe it's just processing yeah. through change. I, I don't know. I don't know yeah. what that is at all, but, um, but Brooke, dude, thank you so much. Thanks for hanging out <laughs> here. How, yeah, can, absolutely. how can people find you? How can they, uh, if they want to chat with you and you know, learn more, learn more. Thank you. Um, so I, uh, had a great time talking with you guys too. I feel like we probably could have made this last forever. So, um, now it's a better, you know, let's, let's do it again sometime, I guess. Yeah, sure. Um, thank you so much for having me. And if people are looking to connect with me, I do have a website, uh, the grounded stylist.com. You can also find me at the grounded stylist on Instagram, um, get into my DMS. I have lots of posts about my, um, course that I just launched, but also I have an exciting announcement I'm going to throw out there. Um, I am actually doing a full day of mindfulness at Presley Post Salon on May 6th. So I will be at Gold Studios. Um, she is hosting me for a full day mindfulness workshop. So we'll do a way to get grounded behind the chair in the morning and then we'll do a healing circle in the afternoon and um, tickets will be on sale soon. So I'm super excited about that. So if any of these things resonate with you and you want to connect with me, those are the ways you can find me. That's awesome. That's amazing. Yeah, that's so cool. I can't wait to see uh, how that class goes. That, it, oh, it's going to be great. Up in Portland. So if you're yeah. in Portland, you're in the Pacific Northwest. And or if you happen to be in the Tulum area. Uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> yeah, I'll be in Tulum uh, February 15th through the 19th. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And, and Mr. Carruthers, you need to get up to uh, Portland so you can go hang out with these guys. Yep. That's awesome. Yep. Brooke, thanks for hanging out with thank us. You. Uh, thank you for sharing your your knowledge and your information. And uh, just thank you very, very much for joining us on your day off. Thank you. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends, give us a rating and drop a review to listen to all the latest podcasts. Please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet and to stay connected on and off the show. You can follow us at hair Distry on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again. And we'll see you next time. Peace and love.